Welcome back, knights. Are you guys ready for another exciting quest? Hey, have you guys seen my friend Sparky? Oh, here I am. Here I am. Uh, here I am. Uh, 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 Sparky, our friends are back. And look how good they froze when you sneezed. Sorry I was late. Uh, I had cold feet. What? What are you talking about? You know, cold feet, nervous, it's a joke. Have you been reading that old joke book again? Oh, oh yeah. I figured I'd better brush up on some jokes about cold. After all, everything is cool here at North Castle, thanks to me and my sneezing. It certainly is cool up here. Want to know what's also cool? The royal musicians. Let's take a listen to them. When temptation's big and my faith seems small, I remember to surrender to the one who's able to deliver. Job musicians and knights, now feel free to chill out. <laughs> I'm a Regina. Could you check my wing? Yeah. You know the royal dog, don't you? Uh huh. The royal dog Frost. Frost? D did bite? Did he bite your wing? <laughs> he sure did, and now I have frostbite. <laughs> Get it? Unfortunately, I do. But I found another riddle. Remember, the riddles are written in ancient dragon languages. And I am the only one who can interpret. Let me uh, let me see what you have. Okay, here. Hmm. Mm. Oh, this one says, if the breastplate of justice is what you seek, look for five pebbles in a creek. Hmm. The breastplate of justice 
And five pebbles in a creek. Well, around here it would be five pebbles in our frozen moat. Well, we must have to look in the king's book for something with five pebbles. But all I'm seeing is people crossing a river in 12 rocks. Huh. Uh, there was a boy who had five loaves of bread. I've eaten some bread that was about as hard as a rock. I don't think that's it. Oh, here we go. First Samuel, there's a story about a boy with five petal, pebbles. I think the royal players can help us out from here. Let's open the book and see. The book of First Samuel, chapter 17, tells us about one of the most famous battles in the history of the world. It all starts with King Saul, a very strong and handsome guy. However, as we learn later, he was not a great king at all. Therefore, God chose a small young shepherd to be the next king. He was the smallest and youngest of eight sons. His name was David. This little shepherd really loved God. King Saul led his people in battle against their arch nemesis, the Philistines. They were not very nice people. When I said they were not nice, I meant to say they were very mean. Thank you. The Philistine army was very confident, and for good reason. They had a secret weapon, a powerful soldier named Goliath. He measured six cubits and a span. In other words, he was very tall. Taller than that. Taller? Close enough. Every day, Goliath yelled at the Israelites to send out someone to fight. All the Israelites, including King Saul, were too afraid to fight Goliath, so they did nothing for 40 days. Nothing, that is, until little David showed up to bring lunch to his brothers. While delivering food, David heard Goliath shouting at the Israelites, send out a man for me to fight. So he volunteered. The king was unsure about sending a boy into battle. But David told the king about how he had fought both lion and bear to protect his sheep. I will do the same to Goliath. The king agreed and gave David all of his armor to wear, but it didn't fit. Instead, David simply took his sling, went to the creek, and found five smooth rocks. <clears throat> Maybe try those smaller ones over there. With only his sling and a bag of rocks, David goes to fight the powerful Goliath. Now, it was Goliath's turn to be shocked as he saw David approaching. Instead of a strong warrior, the Israelites sent a small shepherd boy with no armor. Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? Unfazed, David said, you fight me with weapons, but God will win this battle. Goliath just laughed. <laughs> um, maybe a little more, yeah, that's it. Anyway, David took a stone from his bag, put it in his sling and flung it at Goliath. It hit him right in the head and he fell on his face. When the other Philistines saw that Goliath was dead, they all ran away and the Israelites ran after them. All of this was just as David said when he told Goliath, our God doesn't need swords or spears. God owns this battle and he will hand all of you over to us and bring justice. And this is just one great story from the King's Book. Whoa, that was one epic battle. Sparky? Sparky? Where'd you go? Is it over? Was the giant defeated? Yes, it's over. The giant was defeated. Were you afraid of Goliath? Of course. Ugh. Hey, I'm sure the Israelites were too. And you know, I really think David would like Gerbanner verse this week. Remember, it's from Ephesians. 
Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Sparky, why don't you say it with me this time? Be strong, Be strong in the, in the Lord, Lord and, and in, in the, the strength, strength of, of his, his power. power. That does give me a little more courage. Speaking of courage, it's time for our knights to go on another quest. Last time our brave knights practiced their balance, which is very important for a knight. What do they need to practice this time? Great question. Knights, today we need to practice how to ride a horse. This is super, super important. Knights get around with horses. That's how they travel. And sometimes that is how they'll travel all day long. So can you all stand up? Okay, now we're going to practice riding a horse. So to ride a horse, we need to bend our knees a little. Be sure to keep your back straight. And can you bounce like you're riding a horse? Good job. Do they need to hold on to anything? You're right. I almost forgot. When we're riding a horse, we have to hold on to the reins. So you can use one hand or two hands. And you hold on to the reins. And you bounce like you're riding a horse. Oh. Good job. Yeah, they're looking more like knights. Oh. What's our castle call out for today? Great question. Today's castle call out is armor up with justice. So we're going to do armor up like yesterday. And to do justice, we are going to take our hands and you're going to take your thumbs and your pointer fingers and put them together in circles. So it's like the okay sign. And you put them out in front of you and you're going to make them go opposite, kind of like they're off balance. And that's for justice. So we're going to go armor up with justice. Can you guys do that with me? Ready? Armor up with justice. <laughs> Good job, boys and girls. So, you can unfreeze when your host takes you to your next station. Off you go to find the breastplate of justice. Welcome back, Knights. Here we are at Story Hall. I'm so glad that you guys are here again with me today. Um, I'm so excited that we get to learn about another story, um, just like we did yesterday. We learned yesterday about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how they were able to armor up with truth. Boys and girls, I know you're on a quest for even more armor of the king's armor. And today we're going to learn that we can also armor up with justice. Um, but before we get into the story, let's make sure that we can prepare our hearts with our Bible verse. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Let's say that together. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Huzzah! Remember that means great job. Um, all right, so the royal players told us another wonderful story today. The story comes from the king's book. Remember that King's book has two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And today, our story, again, is from the Old Testament. Um, it starts with two, two groups of people. We have the Israelites and the Philistines. Um, the Philistines had a warrior. He was big and strong. His name was Goliath, and he was even a bully. He wasn't very nice. He wasn't nice to the Israelites. He said mean things. And um, the Philistines sent Goliath into battle to battle someone from the Israelites. Well, no one from the Israelites wanted to face Goliath. I mean, could you imagine? And they looked, but no one would volunteer, and no one wanted to fight him. But then eventually, um, a shepherd named David, he decided that he would face Goliath. The Israelites weren't so sure about this. David was just a shepherd, and he was a young shepherd. He didn't have any experience. He wasn't a warrior. There was no way he could stand up to a bully like Goliath. David had such great faith in God, and he knew that God would be with him and that he would stand with David as he faced Goliath. David didn't even have any armor to put on. He was too small, and none of the armor fit him. So he took five small stones in his sling. He took his sling, and he shot a stone, and it went right to Goliath's forehead, and he knocked him over. 
The Philistines couldn't believe it. They ran far away and the Israelites cheered and they were so excited because David had beat Goliath with God by his side. Now, Knights, we're going to get ready to um, answer some questions about our Bible story. for our Bible activity. Um, your host should have a few things for you. You should have five small stones and a marker. Now, when David went into battle against Goliath, it wasn't the five smooth stones that made a difference. It was God standing with him. What you're going to do is you are going to put your name on one of the five stones. On the other stones, you're going to put names of people who care about you and that you care about. So you might want to put your mom or your dad or a grandma or grandpa or brother or sister or friend. Um, you might want to put God or Jesus on one of the stones because they're always there for you. You could put me on your stone. After you're done putting your names on your stones. You want to keep these stones somewhere to remind you. Maybe next to your bed on a nightstand. Maybe you want to put them in your garden. Put them somewhere so that when you're feeling like you need to have somebody stand with you, you could put yourself in the middle and have the other stones surround it so you can feel their love um, helping you out. And maybe someone in your life that you put a name on your stone needs a little love and prayer. You could put them in the middle to remind yourself to be there and care for them. I hope you guys have a lot of fun doing this activity. Um, before I say goodbye, I want to make sure that you guys know um, about your lanyard. Go ahead and put your shield of justice on your lanyard for today as well. Um, Knights, I had a great time with you today, um, learning our story and spending time together. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Have a great one. Bye, Knights. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Science Time. Science Time. I'm Mr. C, and of course, I'm joined with my friend Sparky. Hi. How you doing today, Sparky? I'm doing great. Excited about some science. Great. I'm excited, too. I'm also doing well. Thank you for asking. How? Oh. It's that okay. That's rude of me. How are you? I'm doing great, Sparky. Good to hear. Thank you. Science. Okay. Well, in today's story, um, God gave David faith to fight Goliath and win. And... The North Castle needs some protection, so we're going to be making some catapults to help protect our castle today. Catapults? Yeah, have you ever built a catapult before? No, I've seen it done, but I've never built a catapult. Well, I'm going to teach you how to build a catapult. Excellent. Like any science experiment or building project, we have a lot of materials. What do you have? I have some rubber bands, a lot. We have Look at all that. clothespins, we have popsicle sticks. Pencils, marshmallows, which we're going to be shooting, bottle caps, <laughs> spoons, tape. We have a lot of materials today, and you could use them however you'd like um, to build your catapults. So we're going to show you a few here today, but if you want to get creative and build your own catapult, you should do that. Okay? Okay. All right. So.
our Finnish catapult here that's gonna help us protect the North Castle. North Castle. So. Protect it. I think we should try it out. What do you think, Sparky? Absolutely. All right. What I'm are gonna, we using? We're gonna use marshmallows to follow. I'm gonna uh, tighten up my goggles here just in case, you know? I don't wanna get poked first. in the eye. So, we're gonna put our marshmallow into our spoon catapult. It helps if you put your finger here at the bottom of the spoon if you use the similar design, because that helps um, create more tension so you can really fling it. <laughs> All right, you ready, Sparky? Yeah! All right, let's see. Let's fire a few more. Okay! I'm gonna load this one up. These catapults might not be able to protect the North Castle. Fortunately, our relationship and commitment with God and God's children will help us stand for justice. Welcome to Craft Time. You are the Knights of the North Castle, and today we're going to create a castle, and you're going to be searching for armor in your castle. Okay, so you're gonna need a piece of black paper, a pattern if you wanna use it, or you can draw your own. A little paper plate, your gray paint, a sponge, and a pencil. And we have scraps of paper. Scraps of paper that are gonna be your, the roof on your turret, your drawbridge, and your windows. And a pencil and a scissors. And some glue. That's right, we need glue. Okay, I used the pattern to trace my castle. And again, you can draw your own if you want. I used a white crayon just so you could see it better, but you can still see it fine with a pencil. So you're gonna squirt a little gray paint on your plate, use the side of your sponge, and just do a little dabbing. You don't want it on there real thick. You wanna be able to see the texture of the sponge because then it looks more like stone. So, I'm just gonna go across. Leave a little space in between. And then the next row you're going to stagger. And you can get about, I don't know, it looks about six sponge prints out of each dip in the paint. See the nice texture there? You don't have to dip your paint in every time right. you're making a stone. Now where I have a little Stone, I'm going to turn my sponge sideways so I can just get a little one in there. I would probably use a little one up there too. Okay, while your castle is drying, you can start to make your windows and the drawbridge and the little turrets for the top. So I would take a pencil and you can draw um, some large triangles. I'm actually going to do it with a black marker so you can see what I'm doing, but you guys use a pencil. You can draw large triangles. You can make letter U shapes or some windows or doors. You can make um, rectangles or squares. And then when you have all those made, you're going to carefully cut them out with your scissors. And you should have a bunch of windows and doors, maybe a large drawbridge. And they will look like this. And then we're going to, when our castle is dry, we're going to glue those on. All right, so after it's dry, we're going to cut it out. When you get here, what I would do is just make one cut all along the top of your granulated wall. And then it's a lot easier to go in and out. And I think I would just make all of these cuts first and then go back. And if you draw your own, you don't have to make as many, you can make them bigger and farther apart.
Okay, once you have your castle dry and all your pieces cut out, remember to always put the glue on the back of the thing that you cut out and press it down. And then when you're gluing your turrets at the top, if you made these nice triangles, remember that if you put glue all over the back, you're gonna glue it to the table. So don't do that. Just put a little bit of glue on the bottom here, or you could put a little bit of glue on the top of your castle and press. A little bit of glue and press. And when you all finish, your castle will look like this, or something similar. Welcome to day two of your VBS games. Your first game is going to be the wrong armor. David was chosen as a champion for Israel and Saul gave David his armor to wear. But the problem was it didn't fit right. You can't go into armor wearing the wrong size armor to protect yourself. It just doesn't work. So that's what you're gonna do today. You are gonna have on the wrong armor. Your gloves are going to be Ziploc bags, and if you have rain boots or other boots at home that you can use, you're gonna be using those for today's game. What you're gonna to need today is you're going to need the Ziploc bags, masking tape, boots optional if you have them, you will need two large bowls, and your pom-poms. game of today, Banner vs. Towers. And this one is based off Ephesians 6 verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his power. David was strong in the Lord and relied upon God's strength to seek justice for the Israelites. The supplies you're going to need today are cups, large craft sticks, and a cute little figurine. What you're going to do is you are going to build the tallest tower you can with your supplies so that you can put your figurine on top. Once you have built it once, can you modify it, build it a second time, make it even taller or stronger? <laughs>
David went into battle against Goliath with the king's armor, a sandwich and an apple, a sling and five small stones, his best friend. A sling and five small stones. To become a knight, one would first become a page and then a whole book, squire, police officer, baker. A squire. Our banner verse states, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power, army, horses, iceberg. Power. Thanks for playing. Awesome job, Knights. You guys must really know your trivia. To celebrate your awesome return back on your quest, let's stand up and sing some songs with the royal musicians. job singing everyone but I didn't get to ask how did your quest go did you find the breastplate of justice or did you find the breastplate of just ice <laughs> get it just ice <laughs> yep I think we got it <laughs> just ice <laughs> It's funny because it sounds like just is. And there's a lot of ice here. <laughs> Sparky, I think we get it. But remember, we're talking about the breastplate of justice. 
<laughs> what is a breastplate anyway? What's justice? Are these things for Roman soldiers had? I'm glad you asked. Remember, Paul, the writer, writer of Ephesians, he knew a lot about Roman soldiers. So when he was writing about them, he used these metaphors. And metaphors help us use the familiar to understand the unfamiliar. So a breastplate helps us protect important parts of our body, like our heart and our lungs. And when we talk about justice, we talk about people getting what they deserve for either a good thing or maybe something a bad thing they've done. So when David defeated Goliath, that was justice? Yes. God can bring justice because he's perfect and he is just. So God can make justice. Last time we found the belt of truth and this time we found the breastplate of justice. Those sound like two different things. Well, not exactly. They actually go together. Just like the breastplate and the belt go together, so do truth and justice. You have to put on a belt before you can put on your breastplate and the armor and you have to receive truth before you can get justice. This is really exciting. <laughs> Great job. The story of David reminds us that God can bring justice. God trusted David to be sure that he could defeat the giant. And God, David knew that God would bring justice between the Israelites and Goliath. And God brought the Israelites to victory, even though they had to face Goliath. He did. Do you remember our castle call out? Oh. Do you? Oh, yeah. All right, let's do it together. Remember, it's armor up with justice. Say it with us. Come on, knights. Armor, armor up, up with, with justice. justice. All right, and now can we also say our banner verse? It's from Ephesians 6, verse 10. It says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. All right. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us justice. Thank you that we can trust you to always be with us and to give us the power. Lord, be with us as we go home today. Amen. See everyone tomorrow. Bye.